Okay, so hello guys. Uh, I think we're getting started now. Um, so I'll, this presentation will give you an overview of Fuse Fabric, which is a project uh, I've been working on since uh, now, well, roughly two years, I think we started uh, at the beginning of it. Um, so I, I come from um, Fuse. I'm part of Red Hat now uh, because of the Fuse acquisitions that happened last year, along with a few other guys, including uh, Klaus, which was just talking. Um, so I'm working on various projects at Apache, and um, and I show you what uh, we've done since uh, roughly two years now on this project. So um, the idea is that so, so at Fuse we are working heavily with uh, Camel, ActiveMQ, uh, 6F, and so it's all about integration. And uh, we have a number of uh, customers and, and users, obviously, who need to deploy uh, such integration solutions to a large scale. And uh, we didn't add any real thing to help them doing uh, such large scale deployments. So we started this, uh, this project, which is based uh, on Apache Caraf, which is uh, the OSGI distribution that we use as our base container for uh, Fuse ESB and, and Fuse MQ. Uh, which is the messaging and the ESB solution uh, we had. And, and so Apache Craft is based on OSGI, and um, we started this project to allow an easy way, to, to provide an easy way to deploy and configure OSGI based applications. So mostly uh, focusing on the beginning on Caraf based uh, OSGI based applications, uh, which includes Camel, CXF, and other projects we, we work on. So wha what it becomes now is uh, some kind of uh, integration platform, open source integration platform. So that's what uh, we call IPaaS, so integration platform as a service. So you, you can we'll see you can deploy easily all your integration bits and more actually than just integration bits that we'll see. So what uh, Fuse Fabric does is uh, it contains it has. Uh, a central registry which keeps track of everything. And then you can deploy a bunch of different things. So it could be a few ZSB instances or just plain camel endpoints, active MQ brokers. And uh, we have some tooling uh, that will show, uh, certainly uh, James will, will show some of the those bits uh, with Fuse IDE um, and Fuse Management Console, which uh, I'll show some of the screenshots that uh, we have to help. Uh, managing those uh, instances. So why would you need to use uh, Fabric, Fuse Fabric? So all those integration projects are difficult to install and certainly difficult to configure and maintain on the long term when you want to change a bit of configuration, deploy a new camel route. Uh, if, if you have tens or hundreds of uh, containers that you need to manage, it's becoming quite hard. So that's the, the really the first point. And the second point is really to be able to uh, scale things more easily. So that uh, if you have a camel route which process some incoming JMS messages, do some whatever XML transformation, routing and whatever, and push the results back to a database or another GMS queue, um, then at some point you may want to scale that easily. And that's what, uh, by deploying several instances of this very route, uh, you can do very easily. So briefly, what does it do? There are three main uh, things. So it, it first, the most important point, right, uh, when, when you start with Fabric is that it manages containers. So we'll see what kind of containers it can manage, but uh, you can manage local containers or remote, create remote containers or access a cloud, hybrid cloud or whatever, but uh, easily create new containers, deploy your applications there and configure them. Uh, the second thing is that uh, 
is that you deploy your applications once you have your containers. You want to actually deploy what you need because the containers in itself isn't really interesting. So uh, it provides a way to provision remotely um, your applications and configure them uh, in, in, in a way we'll see that is very scalable. Uh, and then the next thing is that given we have a registry, we uh, use it to uh, actually do some more um, high-level stuff uh, to provide some kind of location transparency and things like that. But the, 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 the fabric, the, your set of containers becomes more dynamic so that you don't have to change the configuration if you migrate one route to a different location. Everything can be done transparently. So let's see um, about, let's see how we can uh, actually manage containers. So this is a screenshot of uh, Fuse Management Console, which comes with uh, Fuse Fabric. Uh, so it, it's really easy to install when you start. Uh, you, you just download the Fabric distribution, you unzip it, you run it, and you go to uh, the web page, which is shown when you start. Just create the Fabric. There's a few things that uh, needs to be uh, set, like the pass initial username and password. And then you can start creating containers. So you start with the local containers that you've started with, which contain the, the console. But then you can start uh, other containers. So you have a bunch of different options. Uh, mostly, if you, if you just want to try it, you just give it a unique name. And, and that's uh, the first step. And once uh, you've given the name, you can choose the type of container. So we currently support three types of containers. Um, child container, because uh, so Fabric is based on Caraf, and Caraf has this notion of child containers, which are uh, new VMs, new OSGI-based uh, runtimes, which are managed by the parent container. Uh, but we can also create uh, remote containers. So you just need to have an SSH access uh, using, uh, well, the password, uh, obviously, is, uh, the, is the host name. And you just need the password and, and, um, and login. And we can actually push a distribution of the, edge, the, the container that we start, join the cluster, and start to provision itself. And we can also uh, handle cloud, uh, different type of clouds. So we support uh, Amazon Rackspace, uh, but could be, uh, actually, we can provide, we can support any kind of cloud because we use uh, JClouds. And as long as you have a provider for your cloud, um, as long as you have an integration with JCloud for your cloud provider, uh, we can support it. So when, when you have created uh, a few containers, you need to start deploying your applications. So what we uh, deploy is uh, mostly different kind of things. It's, it's usually related to SGI for now. Uh, but we expand that uh, so that we can manage other things we'll see. Um, but in the origin, in the current uh, uh, ID, we, we mostly deploy what are called uh, Cara features. So Cara features is just a simple XML descriptor that describes uh, the bundles that you need to deploy to create, that are consist your, that actually make your application. So your application can be a camera route in such a case. You say that you need to deploy this uh, bundle that contains your XML descriptor or route builder uh, for camel. And uh, you just say that you have a, a dependency on camel itself. And that makes you a feature. And so you can easily deploy uh, such a feature by assigning it to a given container. So we'll see a bit more about that. But, um, and and the, the nice thing about profiles that, so you define profiles in, in, uh, in Fabric, and then you apply them to containers. 
but profiles can be inherited and merged to some degree so that you can, um, for example, you, you have a camera route which needs some configuration uh, because depending on where, it's the same template, same kind of thing that it will do, but you need to tweak for different containers, uh, for example, the port or whatever the target uh, where you need to send the, the message to or uh, things like that. So you can split your camel route definition or whatever with your configuration. And uh, using those profiles, you can actually say, well, I have this profile, which is my camel route, my router, um, and I want to uh, deploy it on three different data centers, but each data center will have a different configuration. So you create three different profiles which inherit from the first one. And you just change the configuration. So you, you have some inheritance of profiles that allows you to, uh, depending on wh where you will apply your profile, it will merge everything. So you can have quite complicated things uh, that uh, you can apply simply and that will apply differently on each container. So everything is, can be managed using uh, the Fuse Management Console um, or using uh, command lines in Caraf. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen Caraf. Uh, how many people know about Caraf? Nobody? Yeah, okay. So uh, in Caraf you have a, um, a console which is a, a shell console, kind of like a Unix shell when you start. So you have completion, you have commands, and, um, and you can manage uh, the container itself using uh, this shell, and you can also access to this uh, shell through an SSH uh, protocol, the standard SSH protocol. So uh, Fabric defines a set of commands to manage the containers and the Fabric, so create new containers, apply profiles and everything uh, for the Caraf uh, console itself. So let's see what uh, the Fuse Management Console gives about, uh, enables us to do about uh, profiles. So when you, we've got, um, uh, this is a page of uh, the Fuse Management Console which talks about profiles. So we, s we can see a bunch of different profiles on the right. And uh, we can see uh, how many containers uh, are using this profile. So in this case, we have uh, the camel profile and we have one container uh, which is using it. And so we can create, uh, well, if we click on the camel profile, we'll see uh, the definition of the profile itself. So we can see a bunch of different tabs uh, at the bottom. And so we have three features that are defined. So that, those are camera features. So uh, we have camel blueprint, camel core, and fabric camel. So uh, it means that uh, the container, when it will be applied, this profile will automatically provision uh, Camel Core, the blueprint support for Camel, and the fabric specific things for Camel 2. So which means when you want to deploy a route, uh, a Camel route, you can inherit from this profile so that you just have to specify in addition to, uh, to this profile, you just add your own Camel route, inherit this profile, and all the dependencies will be already uh, provisioned. So the, the thing is that in addition to uh, the deployment bits that we want to uh, associate to a profile, we have the configuration part. And so configuration is just, uh, is mostly currently uh, a set of uh, properties file um, what that you we use uh, in OSGI through the uh, standard config admin uh, service, which uh, is well supported by Camel, for example. So in Camel, if you use Spring with Camel, you, you, or if you use Spring at all, um, you have the um, dollar uh, curly brackets thing, which enables you to replace uh, some bits of configuration into your Spring XML definition. Uh, so Camel supports that in, uh, in OSGI too with Blueprint. And so you can define the source of those configuration bits of those key value pairs uh, in, in Fabric so that when you apply your, when you create your routes, it will grab the configuration 
uh, from fabric or from the configuration that has been employed and associated with your profiles. So in, in, uh, in that very case, uh, this uh, configuration file is mostly the definition of the profile itself. So it, it reuses the same mechanism. Uh, that's why we see the repository, the different features. The three features that we've seen, we can uh, see them in this uh, configuration. Uh, but we can manage also other kind of uh, properties. So we can store XML configuration file or JSON, a bit of JSON uh, configuration. And all those things will be available on the container. So once we have uh, containers and profiles, uh, we need to associate uh, a set of profiles to a container, uh, which is uh, done using uh, these uh, screenshots. Um, so we see on the, this is a list of containers, and we can see details about each container, uh, and uh, we can change the profiles uh, that are associated with a given container. So this is a really the rough um, thing that you can do with, uh, with Fabric. Uh, I just want to give um, some details about uh, how it's done internally and how it's managed so that you can actually see a bit more about what is possible. So um, the, the central piece of Fabric is a registry, which is uh, current, we, we use uh, Apache Zookeeper, uh, which is a, um, very highly available and scalable uh, tree-based uh, storage, uh, but which supports much more than, it's not just uh, like a database, it's because it provides uh, ordering um, of uh, writes and reads. So we use it to do uh, some more complicated things such as leader election, for example. So if you have a, a master's level um, set up for Active MQ, for example. Uh, so you have multiple brokers. One of them is a master, and the others are slaves and just wait for the master to die uh, so that they can uh, take, uh, take over. Uh, such things are very easily done using Zookeeper. So uh, that's uh, why we, we, we choose uh, Zookeeper um, as the first place. So one other thing that it really handles very well is uh, s network splits, which means that if you are, for example, um, a data center of different uh, servers in different locations, and suddenly uh, the connection between your two data centers is lost. So you, have, you, you end up with two different networks which are not connected anymore. And uh, you need to know if your data is still uh, uh, the correct one or if it's a staled snapshot of the data. And that's a uh, thing that uh, Zookeeper support very well. So that your, your, your consistency of the data is uh, completely uh, ensured. So uh, we use Zookeeper. So Zookeeper is based on a tree. Uh, so we use it to store various things. Uh, most of these are two kinds of uh, configuration that we put of data. So the first one is a, on the top, we can see it's a, it's a registry. It's a runtime registry which stores runtime information about containers. So if a container is available, what's, uh, how is it reachable? So it's port, it's hosts, uh, JMX access, uh, eventually the SSH access for the container and various uh, bits like that. And uh, the second thing is the configuration which contains the profiles definitions and um, all profiles are associated, all containers are associated to profiles or vice versa, it doesn't matter. Um, so these two bits, uh, in the future we may change the configuration to, uh, to store that in a, in a Git repository uh, because this is, it can be live data, so it can be changed and changed currently are replicated and uh, the provisioning mechanism auto automatically updates if you change the, conf the configuration. Um, but for, um, for tracking and auditing all those configuration change changes, 
uh, will uh, switch to a Git repository uh, backend uh, in the future. So uh, in addition to the registry, we have agents, so containers, um, which connect to the registry and uh, grab the data they need to configure. Uh, so we have uh, mainly a Carap agent for now, but we can also, uh, we are planning to support a native Tomcat uh, agents, for example, so that your Tomcat applications will be able to uh, grab some configuration, uh, deploy walls automatically, and things. Uh, so be part of the fabric. So the agents uh, listen to uh, changes in the registry, and if uh, something changes, they apply those changes. So that's why uh, we have some kind of automatic provisioning. So if you change, for example, if you have a live uh, set of uh, agents, uh, you can change uh, the version of the camel that you deploy, that you have deployed, that you have configured in one of your profiles. If you just want to um, grab some bug fixes, you just change the version of the camel call jar which is configured in the profile, and all the agents that are deployed, uh, camel call will update uh, the bundle and use the new version of camel call which contains the bug fixes. So profiles we've seen, uh, I've talked about that already, um, but one thing which is uh, important is that uh, when, when we associate um, a profile to a container, there's a notion of version in, in Fabric. So um, it's uh, your configuration is, it's, it actually it's more easily understandable when we think about uh, an SCM system like Git. So that's why we are changing to it. So you have branches of your configuration. You can create different branches uh, that could have multiple purposes. One of the purposes is to, for example, um, try something, try a new, new configuration. So you create a new branch of your configuration, try it a bit, and if you're confident that uh, um, that's what you want, you just apply it back. So when we associate uh, profiles and containers, uh, we specify the version we use, which means that uh, everything can be uh, live, so if you change a bit of configuration, all the containers will update themselves automatically. But we can also do more complex uh, deployment scenarios, such as if you want to do some running upgrade of changes, uh, which means that you have, for example, uh, 100 containers, and you want to update uh, your camel version, but you don't want to do that on the fly on the 100 containers because you may well, first, if you just apply it at the same time on all the containers, it means that all the containers will roughly shut down for a moment before coming up live. So uh, you want to do that uh, step by step. So for example, uh, grab 10 containers, apply the update, the change, see if that works OK, and then do that by slices. And so that's uh, the, the, the thing that we can do with versioning of those configurations is that you can actually do uh, running upgrades of your configuration <laughs> and deployments. So as I said, the runtime agent stores um, a bunch of information about the agent itself so that you can uh, actually, um, we can connect to the agent for managing them or see uh, what's going on. Uh, so the first bit is the uh, fact that the container is alive, which is obviously important. Um, but then we have the IP uh, and uh, the GMX and SSH URL, which are used to actually manage uh, the agent if you want to go uh, and access it. So it's, it's also used, for example, the GMX domains are um, a list of all the uh, GMX and beans that are uh, available on, on a given agent. 
and it's used by the tooling to actually show and know what is deployed exactly as that when you when we see um, an active MQ related MD, we know that an active MQ broker has been uh, is available on this agent, and we, we can actually uh, show the active MQ specific uh, management page. Uh, so this is about uh, a bit more uh, technical about uh, the provisioning and how it works. Um, so the it really uses OSGI. OSGI is really nice technology for modularity. Uh, it's it's a sometimes a bit complicated, so it's not uh, free. Uh, it comes uh, so this possibilities comes with a cost, um, and we try to. Uh, remove some of the cost. Uh, for example, the nice thing about uh, OSGI is that you can deploy um, different things in different versions without uh, having any class loader issues and still be able to share things. So if we compare the, the simple model, for example, if you work with uh, web applications, web applications are fine because your class loader is mostly isolated. I mean, uh, if, you, if we don't speak about what provided by the container. When you deploy your web application with Camel, uh, you embed Camel into your web application, you deploy it, and it works. That's nice. Perfect. Uh, if you want to share things between web applications, it's slightly more complicated, because you run into class loader issues. You can't just de pass an object from one web application to another. So if you want to solve that in a pure web uh, web server, you need to put these shared classes onto the container of the class loader or the container itself. So that if you move Camel to the um, web container class loader, it's nice because now all the, uh, web, the, the web applications can access the same Camel and exchange messages and stuff like that between web applications. The problem is that now you stick with one version of Camel. You can't change, you can't update it anymore. There's no way you can actually uh, have one application which needs uh, a newer Camel version without shutting down all the other applications, upgrading your jar, and restarting your web server. So that's uh, what OSGI provides. Uh, by having a more complicated class loader architecture, it enables you to share things, but still be able to deploy uh, jars that are incompatible. For example, you may have two, um, two versions of the same jar without leading to incompatible things because everything is really uh, nicely uh, separated and you control all of that. So OSGI is really a nice thing when you want this uh, modularity and dynamism for your deployments. So uh, all the provisioning currently is mostly done with, um, because, because we use OSGI. Uh, it's uh, done through bundles. Um, so everyone knows about OSGI a bit or not? Who, have, who has already used OSGI? Yeah. So bundles in OSGI, I should have started by that. But, uh, in OSGI, uh, you deploy things through using bundles. Bundles are jars with just additional metadata, uh, which specifies, uh, for example, uh, the packaging, the packages, sorry, the packages that are exported or the packages that you, are, you need for this bundle. So um, as a simple example, if you take a camel route that you create, uh, one of the packages that you will need is camel, is the packages that comes from camel core. So you, in your bundle that you will create, which is a jar, which will contain your XML, Camel XML uh, definition, for example, you will say, I need, I need this package, org.apache.camel.api, uh, or whatever, all the packages that you need. Uh, so there are tools to create that for you. But then your jar is just a plain jar, but with additional metadata that will be used to create a class loader that will fit the needs of your jar, 
without interfering with everything else. That's how we can deploy, for example, camel in version 2.9 and camel in version 2.10 in the same container and make sure that everything works correctly. So uh, the provisioning mechanism allows us to update uh, so Cara features or individual bundles with the bundles that you want to deploy. Uh, and it can even update the container itself. So uh, we can update Caraf itself or update the OSGI framework, uh, which obviously needs a reboot of the container, but we can update pretty much everything. So uh, versioning, I already talked a bit about uh, versioning. Uh, it's uh, really the fact that you can an agent points to a, a given version of the configuration and you can then do uh, running upgrade. So the third uh, thing that uh, Fabric <coughs> provides in addition to so being able to um, create uh, start stop agents and uh, def define the configuration uh, for the deployments. Uh, we have those uh, additional services that uh, uh, leverage the registries that we have. And the fact that we know where containers are, what is deployed on top of them. Um, so uh, we, 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 we have a bunch of different services uh, that we, we have uh, that can provide some load balancing, uh, transparent lookups, and uh, scaling. Uh, so for example, for Camel, uh, we have a specific component, uh, which is a fabric component, which allows you to register or consume from a Camel endpoint without really uh, knowing where it is. For example, you want to um, uh, consume uh, something from an endpoint in Camel. Uh, you know, uh, you, you don't want to explicitly point to it. For example, if you want to consume uh, an FTP file, if you, in, in Camel, usually you'd have to uh, specify the host name and the port, uh, the login, uh, for to, to, to be able to access this FTP server. Uh, but if you uh, want an indirection, um, the, the fabric component can do that. So what it does is that instead of consuming from a plain endpoint, you consume from a fabric endpoint. So you give an identifier to this endpoint that you'll uh, consume from. And uh, there's a lookup that will be done at runtime so that it will actually, fabric will, whenever you uh, deploy a camel route, uh, which will uh, register um, one of these endpoints, so it's the same identifier, uh, then you will be able to uh, know Fabric will uh, do the lookup and, and determine exactly where this endpoint is and, and be able to uh, access it. So uh, if we uh, look at this example, we have two, uh, two endpoints uh, that are registered using the fabric component. So it's the same ID, so it's Toto. And actually, they use both the same uh, URL because they're just uh, consuming from uh, HTTP. Uh, but when you want to send a message to one of these endpoints, so uh, you end up with two, two web servers or two uh, camel endpoints that will be able to receive HTTP requests. And uh, when you want to actually send one, uh, an HTTP request to one of these endpoints, uh, you can just use Fabric Toto uh, so that it will look up where these exact endpoints are and choose one and send your uh, message. So the nice thing is that uh, you can actually have some automatic load balancing, but also it's really dynamic, which means that if you just create a new container apply the same profiles that have been used to deploy this route, you now have not only two containers that will process, receive your HTTP request, but three, and it will be done completely transparently. And if one of them is shut down, well, it's not really a problem. It will just reach the load balance to the other ones. 
so, so that's for the fabric, um, the camel fabric. Uh, we also have uh, something which is called distributed OSGI, which is um, a specification that comes from the OSGI Alliance, which is the one that creates all the OSGI specifications, and which allows a transparent remoting. It's really a, a remoting mechanism for OSGI, kind of like RMI or any other remoting mechanism. Uh, it's, it's really transparent, uh, so, uh, um, so I won't go into the details because if you're not really familiar with OSGI, it won't really uh, give you much, but it's really fast and it has the same uh, features that uh, the camel one does, which means uh, lookup transparent, look up tr so location transparency and load balancing. And that's really fast, so as a real uh, remoting mechanism, that's really nice. So the, the idea is really the same than in Force Fabric. Uh, so you have an agent which register uh, the service that it has uh, locally so that other agents can actually look up and call them. Uh, for ActiveMQ, we also have uh, components, a set of components for uh, Fabric. Uh, mainly uh, the idea is that the brokers can discover themselves and um, and create a cluster so as a client doesn't need to know where the GMS broker is, can just uh, uh, look it up uh, using an identifier that will be registered by the broker so that wherever the broker are, your client will be able to connect it so you can move your GMS brokers and scale them and it all works from the client point of view. So that's a typical application for ActiveMQ. So the client just uses, uh, specifies that uh, it uses Fabric as a discovery mechanism and uh, doesn't need to uh, take care of the exact location anymore. Uh, we also have uh, added services for CXF, um, uh, which provides the same kind of transpar uh, location transparency and load balancing. Uh, one other thing that we, are, uh, we have done is uh, the ability to spawn uh, any kind of process uh, in addition to uh, OSGI containers. Uh, so from the OSGI container, you can just uh, start as a Tomcat, a, a real a pure Tomcat distribution or a JT distribution if you want uh, JT instead of Tomcat or, or whatever. It's just based on uh, downloading uh, a, um, a zip distribution and uh, specifying what should be done to start, stop, and um, restart eventually, uh, shut down uh, the process. So that any kind of process can be managed by Fabric and you can, in this way, uh, easily deploy anything on uh, tons of uh, containers. So we'll actually work more on that uh, to, uh, to make it less uh, OSGI uh, specific and, and be able to handle more broad um, sets of uh, use cases. Um, so do you have any questions? So I, I, sh I really should have started by asking if you were familiar with uh, OSGI, so I'm sorry. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, um, anything that did not really come clear, uh, I can answer them. Or if you don't, I think I have a few minutes, five minutes left, so I can I can show you uh, a demo in live if you want. But any questions? So not really. So I just um, so you have a few links. So the, the main important one is uh, fabric.chisos.org, uh, so that you can actually uh, look at the website, uh, download things and everything. I'm going to see if I can actually uh, start something. Whoops. Yep. Um, so I'm going to um, start the fuse management console from scratch. 
so this is uh, a killing, uh, just killing it. So that, that's uh, the plain uh, fuse management console that you would download from, from, from the website. I'm just going to uh, start it. So it creates uh, the container it's uh, public itself. Uh, so this is a Caraf uh, console, uh, which is uh, really like um, a Unix shell. So uh, you can see uh, all the uh, bundles that are deployed on the OSGI runtime. Uh, you can, uh, you have completion history, so I just click on the upper uh, a row. Um, we have things uh, like, like that. So it's really like a Unix shell uh, for our room inside the, the OSGI container. So if I uh, look at what it told me, should have uh, gave me a URL, which is the location of the uh, fabric uh, web interface. So this is, uh, I need to create uh, the initial uh, container, so I just give a username and password. Uh, create it. So we don't see much, and now I can log in. And so here I have my initial uh, containers that I started uh, using the bin slash caraf uh, shell script. And this is um, everything, so I can create uh, another container, let's say test one. Uh, I want it to uh, have, let's say, what do we have? Uh, camera example. And it, it will be a child container of the current one. So that's uh, Selecting the parent. So now I see my se the second kernel has been created. It's starting, and it's uh, it's uh, provisioning itself. Uh, it may have I haven't seen. Sometimes it's uh, re it needs to reboot. Uh, so the active I'm not sure if the active has com become gray for a second or not, uh, but it can be so that it reboots itself because it has updated some critical jars that need a reboot. And so now I have uh, this second container, um, which is up and ready. I can see it. Um, so this is a command that is associated to the visualization of the container list. So I can see uh, the initial container and the one that I have created. I can also uh, connect to it. And it's the same console, but I'm now on the test one container. So I, actually, I can actually see um, different uh, bundles that have been deployed that are not really present on the first one. That's because I applied it as an example camel profile. So I should have somewhere uh, camel, camel bundle. So I have camel core, ActiveMQ camel, which is a camel component for ActiveMQ. Uh, the blueprint support, uh, caraf commands for camel, and the DMS component. So that's really um, how it works. And if I change, if I go back to um, to uh, if I change uh, the profiles, I can see I can see um, the various uh, bits for the container which are updated live. Uh, so I can add a profile, for example, I can add uh, just uh, CXF. If I go back, it's provisioning. And I should see, um, so it's still installing a bunch of additional bundles, as you see, they are installed, so it doesn't finish the provisioning um, thing. It 
has do to download a bunch of bundles uh, and then install them. But that's, uh, and you see that the, the, the deployment is really dynamic, but everything is updated uh, when we change the associations. So I'm done. Thank you.